I've been down to Madison to see the folks and sights. You'd laugh, I'm sure, to hear them talk about the women's rights. Now it's just as plain as my old hat, as plain as plain can be, that if the women want the vote, they'll get no help from me. Hey gamers, this is Liz Davidson from Beyond Solitaire, and in this video, I'm going to teach you how to play votes for women with one or two human players versus the Oppobot. This video is one of a series, so if you want to learn how to play the two to four player version of this game where a human plays the opposition, go see my other video for that. This is all about going up against an automated opponent where humans will play the suffragists and the Oppobot is going to oppose us. Votes for Women is a game about the American women's suffrage movement, and the goal is for the suffragist player to pass the 19th Amendment and then build enough power in 36 states to ratify it. If Congress does not pass the amendment, or if 13 states refuse to ratify it, then the opposition wins and patriarchy reigns, which we certainly do not want, especially not in this mode, because there is no opposition player. Even though there's another video, I'm going to give you the full setup and instructions tour, because solo players count too. But for now, here's our board, and as you can see, we have a lovely map of the United States, and it is divided into six different regions. The West, the Plains, the South, the Midwest, the Atlantic and Appalachia, and the Northeast. And then within each of these numbered regions, we also have eight states that are numbered, and that's going to play in when we're making decisions for the Oppobot. The other thing that you might notice is that you have little circles for these states with the numbers in them. When you're placing cubes in these smaller states, you're going to be really glad that you have these little spaces because otherwise you can get a little cramped in there. Beneath our lovely United States map, we have spaces to put cards. So these are spaces for cards that have lasting effects, either for the turn. So you'll put a card that's in effect for the rest of the turn here, and it will have this clock symbol on it. Cards that last for the rest of the game, which will have an infinity symbol on them. Or cards that are in effect for final voting, which will have a ballot box on them. You also have a lovely Congress support tracker. So we as the suffragists are going to be trying to get six of these little white cylinders placed here to show that Congress has decided to support and vote for the amendment and then send it to the states for ratification. The opposition will, however, be trying to take these away. So it's going to be a bit of a tug of war to try to get Congress to pass Amendment 19. We've also got a turn tracker down here. The game takes place across six turns that are divided into a few different phases, and we're going to go over that in detail in the course of this video. Now that we've done a little board tour, let's talk about the components for each side. Here we have our Suffragist and Oppobot decks. There's also a red opposition deck, but that's for a human player, and you do not need it for now, so you can just put that back in the box. It's the Oppobot all the way in this video. You're also going to have out two campaigners of each color. So the Suffragist work in two colors, purple and gold, and the opposition works just in red. So you're going to have two yellow campaigners, two purple, and then two red opposition campaigners available to you during gameplay. I want to emphasize that it's two per color because there are extra pieces and also alternate art campaigners in the box, and you don't want to set them all out for your game. It's just two, two, and two. We also have cubes that we're going to be putting in the states to emphasize our influence there and the support that the people have for our side of the movement. So again, the suffragists are going to be working in purple and gold. The opposition is going to be working in red. The suffragists also have these really sweet buttons that are a very important currency for us in the game. And the fun thing about these is they are patterned after actual historical buttons that were distributed during this time period to garner support for women's suffrage. So remember, kids, it's a man's world unless women vote. In the version of the game where a human also plays the opposition, there are anti-suffrage buttons in the box as well, but you don't need them for this mode, so just go ahead and put those back. We also have some checks and some X's up here, and they're going to come into play when Congress sends the amendment to the states and we start actually checking whether states have chosen to ratify or to reject the 19th Amendment. Here we have a collection of 36 green check marks, which hopefully we'll be putting everywhere, because if you can put out 36 green check marks, then that means that the suffragists will win the game. On the other hand, there are 13 red X's, and if you put out 13 red X's during the course of voting on the amendment, then unfortunately that means that the opposition is going to win and the Oppobot will have defeated us. Once again, Fort Circle is actually very thoughtful about this, but there are extra components in that box. So make sure you put out 36 checks and 13 X's exactly, because that's going to be really helpful for you as you 
look at your final tallies because then you know the last check that goes out is the winning check. The last X that goes out is the winning X. Do your counting in advance. Trust me, it'll help. And then up here we have state cards and strategy cards. I'm gonna show you how to set up these decks of cards that you can compete for and then use in gameplay as part of this video. So to repeat before we move into full setup, this is a game where we are vying to win the support of the people of the United States to pass the 19th Amendment and have the states ratify it. We as the suffragists are going to try to get Congress to support the amendment and pass it, and then we're gonna to try to get the states to ratify it. The Oppobot, which will be playing against us, is going to try to decrease or keep down support in Congress and then get states to reject it. And we've both got six turns in which to get all of this business done. So let's look at how to set up our decks. And then after that, I'm gonna show you some actual samples of gameplay. We're gonna play through one entire turn and then part way into the next turn so you can see every single phase of the game and go into your own gameplay with confidence. First, I'm gonna show you how to put together the Suffragist deck. This is the deck that we as human players are gonna be playing with. As you can see, we've got a start card and then we have early, middle, and late cards. In order to construct your deck, you take the late cards, you shuffle them, and then you place them at the bottom of the stack. Then we're gonna take the middle cards, shuffle those, and put them on top of the late cards. Then we're gonna take the early cards, shuffle those, and we're gonna put those in the very top of the deck. Then we're gonna keep the start card to the side. This goes into our opening hand of the game, and so don't accidentally shuffle this in. Keep it for yourself, you're about to use it. Meanwhile, our Oppobot deck has a similar setup, but there are a few things about it to note. So we're gonna walk through that as well. As you can see, the Oppobot also has early, middle, and late cards. We also have three start cards for the Oppobot. This one, the Patriarchy, will be played on turn one, but then we also have start cards for turn three and for turn five. So what you're gonna wanna do is set these aside. Again, do not shuffle them into the deck, put them to the side, and they're gonna be used at the appropriate time. Then we're gonna assemble the Oppobot deck. It's similar to forming our own, but we're gonna remove some cards. So you shuffle the late era, take two cards off the top and set them aside and they won't be used this game. Then you do the same for the middle. Shuffle your middle era cards, take two off the top, put them on top of the late cards. And then for the early cards, you're gonna shuffle them, remove two from the top, and then put the early cards at the top of the stack. That way you're gonna have some surprises each time in terms of what the Oppobot has, what it doesn't, and removing the cards also gives it some room to play those start cards that we set aside just now. So we are gonna have just a bit more card set up, and that's the state and the strategy cards. And these are cards that we're gonna be competing for because they're awesome and we're gonna want them, but so does the Oppobot, so watch out. Before we set up the strategy deck, you should absolutely remove two cards that have a big star on them and say, do not use versus Oppobot. Those are opposition research and change in plans. So these cards are gonna leave the game and you do not use them when you're playing against the bot. Then we're gonna shuffle the strategy deck, put it up top, and we're gonna turn over three cards from it. And these are gonna be our strategy card market which we'll use during the strategy phase later in the game. We're also gonna set up the state deck. So to set the state deck, you shuffle all the state cards together, remove three of them, and then we're gonna lay the rest out along the top of the board to create some states we're gonna compete for extra hard because we want the cards. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this down, and we're gonna lay out our states. Utah, Virginia, New Jersey, Montana, Georgia, Illinois, Kansas, Ohio, and California. So I'm gonna go ahead and rearrange these uh, from left to right by region because they're easier for me to read in a little bit. Um, so give me just a second. So everything is set up and we could begin to play. But first, I wanna show you the structure of a turn. So we're gonna talk through the four turn phases. We're gonna talk about some various rules that I don't want you to miss as you go into this game. I'm gonna show you how to play with two players against the Oppobot, and then we're gonna have some sample gameplay. So first things first, turn structure. As mentioned, there are six turns in this game, and each turn has four phases. Planning, strategy, operations, and cleanup. Things are a little bit different for the Oppobot, and we're gonna talk about that as we go along. 
The first thing for us is the planning phase. We start with our start card in our hand, and then at the beginning of each of your turns, you're gonna draw six cards. One, two, three, four, five, six. These are gonna join with your start card to form your opening hand of seven cards. And during your turn, you're gonna play six of these, and then you're gonna carry one of them, the seventh card, over to the following turn. So essentially, planning is just drawing up. The Aquabot does not have a planning phase because it doesn't need one. It just automatically plays cards off the top of the deck every time it has a turn. The second phase of the turn is the strategy phase, and this is actually a phase that we skip during the first turn. You have your first strategy phase on turn two, and we're actually gonna play far enough into a sample game for you to see it happen. But the strategy phase is the way that you get strategy cards. In a two-player game, there are more mind games to play, but versus the Oppobot, you're going to commit some buttons as a suffragist towards trying to win one of these cards, and then the Oppobot's gonna roll a d4 against you. So buttons are a very important currency in the game, and we're gonna talk a lot more about them over the course of this video. But for now, let's just pretend that we have three buttons and it is the strategy phase. What we're gonna do is decide how many of these buttons we want to commit towards getting one of these strategy cards, a strategy card of our choice, and then we're gonna roll a die that represents the Oppobot spinning against us. If the Oppobot's roll beats our roll, then it will take a strategy card, and there are actually instructions for what the Oppobot will do right away when it gets one. If the Oppobot ties us, then nobody gets a strategy card, and if we beat the Oppobot, then we get a strategy card. So because the Oppobot's always rolling a d4, you should never ever pay no buttons just in case you can beat its roll because you don't want it to get those strategy cards. But if you put up one button, you know you're not actually going to get a strategy card. The best thing that you can do is hope for a tie and that nobody gets one. If you put up two buttons, you have slightly better odds, but depending on what the Oppobot rolls, in this case a one, we would win it. If it rolled a two, nobody would get it. And if it rolled a three or a four, the Oppobot would actually get to take a strategy card away from us. And we would roll a die to figure out which one it took. So by betting three buttons, we would be maximizing our odds of getting the strategy card, but we would also be spending all of our buttons. And they have a number of other uses in the game that we are absolutely going to get to. So that's the strategy phase. It's where you bid buttons and the Oppobot rolls against you to see who, if anyone, gets a strategy card. Then you have the operations phase, and this is really where the meat of the game is. There's six rounds in the phase, and that means that you're gonna play six out of the seven cards in your hand. So this is where the cards get played. The suffragist is always gonna go first, so you're always gonna have to decide your first move and then see how the Oppobot responds to you. You absolutely have to play one card from your hand, and then if you've got a state or a strategy card, you may play one of those on each round of the operations phase. And you can get creative with how you spend your cards because each card actually has four ways that it could be used to help you on your turn. The first way to play a card is to play it for the event. And that means that you read the text on the card and you follow the instructions. If you play a card for the event, that may mean that you put campaigners out on the map. It could mean that you receive buttons. It could mean that you place cubes throughout the United States with geographical limitations based on what the card text tells you. Or in some situations, an event will require a die roll. If you are successful on the die roll, the event will go through. If your roll is not successful, then you'll discard the card and nothing happens, so it's kind of a wasted turn. However, if you have bad luck, that's another reason why you want a lot of buttons in this game. If you have buttons to spare, when you get a roll that is not what you wanted, you can spend a button to roll again. So having buttons is also a way to mitigate your luck. I do want to note, however, that if you've rolled more than one die and you spend a button for a reroll, you have to reroll both dice. So if you got a roll that you really liked and a roll that you really didn't, well, you're just going to have to make a choice about whether you want to reroll them both or keep what you've got. So that's an overview of playing a card as an event. Your next option is to play a card for a campaigning action. And I'm going to show you how campaigning actions work. So let's say that we have a purple campaigner in the plains and a yellow campaigner in the west, and we're just going to put them out for the sake of example. And let's discard our Lucy Stone card. So we're gonna play her for a campaigning action rather than for the event, for the card text. And what that would let us do is roll 2d4, one for each of our campaigners. So we're gonna roll these dice. Okay, and this is a pretty decent roll. We got a three and a two. Uh, we're gonna decide which of my campaigners gets which die. So let's give the three to the purple and two to yellow. And then they're gonna get to place cubes in their color 
in states in this region. So maybe I really want to go for Kansas because it's a Kansas state card. So I'll put three purple cubes in Kansas. And then yellow, following sort of the same idea, is going to put two yellow cubes in Ohio. And if I hadn't liked my roll, but I did have a campaign button, I could have spent it to re-roll these dice. So that's basically how a campaign works. However, there is an extra layer to that if you want to change where your campaigns are happening. The other option when you discard a card for campaigns is you still roll the dice as usual, but if you have buttons to spend, you can choose to spend a button to move a campaigner from one region to another. And you can do that before or after you place cubes. So for example, let's say that I have this button and I want to maybe get my purple campaigner out west. I can choose to place her three cubes here, spin the button and move her out west. Or I can decide that that's where I want her to put her cubes in the first place. So I can spin the button, move my campaigner and then put her cubes in California or any other state in this region. The one thing that I could not do is drop one cube in one region, move, and then finish putting cubes in another region. You have to decide which region is going to receive all of your cubes. So that is campaigning. You roll one die for each campaigner, you place dice in their color in the region where they are, and if you want to move regions, you need to pay a button to do that. I also want to note that you need to do that for each campaigner. So if I wanted to move both the purple and the yellow campaigners, I would need to pay two buttons to do that. So that is the campaigning action. In addition to spending your cards for the event or for a campaigning action, there are two more actions that are less common, but can be very, very important. The first of these is the organizing action. To show you how an organizing action works, I have got two campaigners out here to show us the ropes. So when you are going to do an organizing action, you take your card, you discard it, and then you give yourself a button for each campaigner that you have in play. So in this case, that would be two buttons. And that seems like it's not a lot, but given that you need buttons to participate in the strategy phase, to reroll your dice, to move your campaigners from one region to another, and in some cases to pay for events, you're really, really, really gonna want to have as many buttons as you can. And there will be times when it's crucial to spend a card to that end. The fourth action that you could perform with your cards is what's called a lobbying action. Because remember, we are lobbying Congress to get their support, to get that amendment passed, to send it to the states for ratification. And while a lot of your cards are gonna help you with that, the Oppobot is gonna be very much against you and you could get into a situation where you are just determined to try to lobby, 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 and get yourself heard. And if you are in that situation, you need to do a lobbying action. So we've got Lucy Stone back. Let's go ahead and discard her to take a lobbying action. And in that case, what you'll do is you're gonna take 2d6, one for each campaigner that you have out. So in this case, we've got two. We're gonna roll the dice. And unfortunately, that didn't go very well. Maybe we need to spin a button to reroll. But when you do a lobbying action, on every six, you're able to add support to Congress. So if you're rolling for those sixes, it's because you're really, really trying to get that support. It's better to do it with cards, but if you must lobby, then that's what you have to do. So those are the four possible ways to use your cards during the operations phase, and you're going to use six of them total, going back and forth with the Oppobot. To use an Oppobot card, all you actually have to do is flip the card, check the text, and if the Oppobot is able to perform the text, then it is going to do that. And if it's not able to perform the text, then it's going to discard the card and campaign. So how would an Oppobot decide where to campaign? I'm gonna show you just that. The first thing that you're going to need to do is figure out what region the Oppobot would like to go to. And to do that, you're going to roll a d6 because there are six different regions. So in this case, we know that the Oppobot would like to go out west. So let's say that it's got a campaigner on the board. That campaigner will go out west automatically because they don't have to spin buttons like you do. So the Oppobot will come out west and then it will put down cubes depending on a number of factors. If there is a state card that the Oppobot could go for, then it's going to prioritize that. So in this case, the Oppobot's going to try to go to California or Utah. Because the Oppobot currently has no reason to pick one over the other, you would also just roll a die and say, oh, one to three is Cali and four to six is Utah. All right, so the Oppobot would go for Utah. Then, just like you, the Oppobot will roll a d4 and place cubes. Now, on a future campaign action in the West, the Oppobot will go for Utah because it's closer to getting that state card than it is to getting the California card. So the Oppobot is smart enough to do some prioritization. 
if there is no card out there for the Aquabot to compete for, instead of just, you know, picking between two states, you can actually pick between them all. There are eight states per region and you just roll a D8. So in this case, state number three would be California. And that would be the state where the Aquabot put its cubes. So this game comes with a simple way for you to perform the Aquabot's campaigning actions. You just pay attention to whether there are state cards in contention. And if there are not, you roll the dice. And then the final phase of every turn is just clean up. And that's actually pretty simple. First, you're going to advance the turn marker. So if you're on turn one, you go to turn two. You also check for any cards that need to be removed from these boxes down here. Specifically, cards that are in effect for the rest of the turn need to be removed from this box to set up for a nice clean new turn. And the other thing you need to check for at the end of the turn is see if you are on turn six. And if you are, has Congress sent the amendment to the states? And if so, how many states still need to vote? Because if you send the amendment to the states earlier in the game, you're just going to keep competing for support in those states. And we're going to talk about that in more detail in just a moment. Or if you're at the end of turn six, what you're going to need to do is go into something called final voting, which we're also about to discuss. That is the general outline of a turn in this game, but there are a few extra nuances that we need to discuss. One is how to acquire and play these delicious states and strategy cards. We did talk about how to get strategy cards during the strategy phase, but strategy and state cards are played in the same way, so I'm going to cover them both in this section of the video. In order to get a state card, you need to be the first side to place four cubes in that related state. So if I am out west and I manage to get four cubes out here to California, then boom, my campaigner has successfully gotten us this California state card. And it is a fine card indeed. This one's gonna let us draw two cards from our draw deck, discard one card, and then play the other for its event immediately. Card draw is really big in this game because your more powerful cards are deeper into your deck. So this is actually a very nice card to have, but you don't have to play it right away. If you've acquired a state or a strategy card, you put them face up in your play area and you can just hoard them like a dragon to play at the time of your choosing. Make sure you don't try to keep them all until the very end, however, because there are some rules about how they can be played. Specifically, these are played during the operations phase, which is where you're playing cards. You can play one per round and you can play it before or after you play a card from your hand. So if it's time for me to play a card, I can play California, play that card, and then I'm done until after the Opavot goes. Or I can play my card from my hand, play my state card, and then the Opobot goes. I can't play more than one state card during that round. I can't play a state and a strategy card during that round. I'm going to have to parcel it out. So you can hold on to these until an opportune moment, but you definitely don't want to hold on to them for so long that you can't get them all played because they're very useful. And strategy cards work the exact same way. When you acquire one, it goes face up in your play area and you can play it during the operations phase, during your rounds, before or after you play a card from your hand. The next thing I want to talk about is buttons. You might have noticed that buttons are an extremely crucial part of this game, and it's because they are the currency with which you buy a lot of things that really, really matter. Buttons are used in this game for four primary purposes. The first is that a button can be spent to reroll a die or dice. So if you don't like your roll, you can spend a button and reroll. Once again, however, you should note that if you rolled multiple dice, the button forces you to reroll them all. You can't pick and choose, so choose wisely. If you're choosing to use buttons to reroll, you can spend as many as you want until you run out. But again, don't gamble too hard because there are other things you need your buttons for. The second main purpose of buttons is that they can be spent to move a campaigner from one region to another while you're taking a campaigning action. And don't forget, you do have to spend a separate button for each campaigner if you want to move them both. But if you want to get your message out there and make it to different parts of the country, you need to acquire buttons because you need to spin those buttons to move your campaigners around. So don't bet them all on rerolls. The third thing that you use them for is as a commitment during the strategy phase. So you spend these buttons in a bid to get a strategy card during the strategy phase of your turn, which is also crucial because those cards are very good and you really don't want the Oppobot to get them. And then the fourth way to spend them is as directed by an event card text. There will be some cards that you want to play that make you spend buttons. So make sure that you've made a good spending plan for your buttons if you pull a card that you want to play that has a cost in buttons. The next thing I want to discuss is what happens when you send the 19th Amendment out to the states. And just as with state cards, four is the magic number. Any place where you've got four cubes or any place where the opposition has four cubes is a place where they hold sway over the voting public. So if Congress passes the amendment and sends it out to the states and we have four cubes in Wyoming, immediately Wyoming is going to get a green check mark. While if we were not very careful over here in Connecticut, then they might have had four cubes piled up over there 
and it'll be a red X to note that that state has decided to oppose the amendment. However, it is unlikely that every state will be decided at that point. And that means that you're going to continue gameplay until one side or the other has one support from enough states to set out their last check mark or their last X. During the earlier phases of the game, you can put as many cubes as you want into the states, but they're not permanently on your side. That only happens after Congress has decided to pass the amendment and the states have officially voted. You still want to pay attention to getting your cubes out though, because once that amendment passes, you want to be in a good position to win. And the other thing is that you want to be getting four cubes into states that have state cards, and you want to do it first so that you can be the one who gets the state card and deny it to the Oppobot. On that note, I do want to show you how you and the Oppobot are going to compete over this territory, because it's one of the things in this game that makes a lot of sense once you see it, but it's very tempting to do it wrong. So we're going to go over the cube placement rules in this game to make sure that you're all good. Let's say that our friend, the Oppobot, has got a campaigner out here in the Midwest and two cubes in Iowa, which we would very much like to take away. I'm going to send out my yellow campaigner to do battle with him. And let's say that we took a campaign action and we rolled our die. Ooh, we got a four. That's amazing. And we would like to put those cubes in Iowa. However, we don't put those cubes in Iowa alongside those red cubes. If I wanted to put all four of my cubes into Iowa, the first cube I put in would actually just cancel out a red cube. The second one would also cancel out a red cube. And then the third and fourth would go into the state. So both players cannot have their cubes in the same state at the same time. If you place a cube into an area that has your rival's cubes in it, you remove their cubes, empty the state out, and then start to place your own. This is visually very helpful because it's going to make it a lot easier for you to see who is in charge in each of the states at any given moment. And again, that's crucial both for getting your state cards and also for determining which states have ratified the amendment and which have chosen to reject it. And this is going to lead us into another key concept of the game, which is final voting. There may be a situation where you've been competing really hard for these states, but at the end of turn six, the United States just hasn't made up its mind yet. And there's still some states out there who will decide the ultimate fate of the 19th Amendment. However, with gameplay over with and all the cards on the board, you've left it all on the table, you have to do something else for final voting. And it's gonna come down to some die rolls that can be mitigated in a couple of ways, which we're about to discuss. You and the Oppobot are basically going to be in a roll to the death for a given state. And you take turns picking which state you're gonna roll for until the game is won and they're all done. You as a human player can just choose a state so let's say that Texas is undecided and we have a couple of cubes there. So we choose to go for Texas. The reason that we would do that is because these cubes add to your die roll. And so we have a slight advantage here right now. So we roll a D6 and so would the Oppobot. And it's a good thing we had those cubes there because this would be seven to five. We would win the state of Texas. Boom. But it doesn't always work out like that. Let's say that there were no cubes here. We were just having a pure roll off. What would happen then is the opposition generally wins ties. There is one card in the suffragist deck that will allow that to be different and you have to play it to get that card in effect. But generally speaking, the Oppobot will win ties against us. So in this case, Texas would get an X. Oppobot wins. So again, you definitely wanna be dropping cubes everywhere because you don't know if you're gonna need it. Maybe for final voting, maybe it'll just put you over the edge during normal gameplay time. But if you make it to sudden death, you're gonna have to be ready to roll. The Oppobot has its own ways of making choices. So what the Oppobot is always going to do is it's always going to select the state that has the most red cubes in it. And if there are no states that have any red cubes in them, then the Oppobot's going to pick the state that has the least gold and purple cubes. So basically the place where you're going to have the fewest advantages against it. Or if it really comes down to it, you can always roll a D6 and a D8 to determine your region and your state. So this would be Northeast Rhode Island but typically there will be enough cubes out there to help you make a choice. So now that we've discussed all of the big stuff, I wanna discuss one game variant and then we can actually go into some sample gameplay because I love doing it and I think it'll be really fun and it'll show you how the game flows. So I'm gonna be playing this game alone against the Oppobot, but if you've got two people who wanna play and nobody wants to play the opposition, then you can have two people playing against the Oppobot. And basically the way you do that is you split your suffragists up by color. So one person will take the purple campaigners, one person will take the yellow campaigners, then the purple player is going to get the star card, the yellow player will get a random early card drawn off of the deck, 
And then during planning, they're each going to draw three cards so that they each have a hand of four. And then you'll go back and forth with the Oppobot, just as if you were one player, except that the labor is divided among two players. So the purple player will take rounds one, three, and five. And then the gold player is going to take rounds two, four, and six. And you're each going to have a carryover card at the end of your operations phase to carry over into the next turn. Even though you're playing separately, your buttons form a common pool. So you put all of your buttons together and you should be discussing what you do with your buttons. But there are some places where the yellow player has the final say. In the strategy phase, the yellow player is the one who makes the final decision on how many buttons to commit. And they're also the ones who are going to decide um, on who is going to receive the strategy card if you win and get it. The other thing to know is that if you're campaigning, the purple campaigner can only place purple cubes, yellow can only place yellow, but most event cards are gonna have purple or yellow. It's gonna be an image of a split cube and you can still choose which color to put out regardless of what color you are um, if you're playing co-op. So basically you would have purple plays a card, Oppobot goes. Yellow plays a card, Oppobot goes throughout your turn until you'd had a normal turn that was split between two people. Also interesting is that during cleanup phase, uh, you can actually exchange your held card with the other person if you're playing two players against the Oppobot. And then in final voting, you just take turns picking which state you wanna roll for and rolling the die for your side. So again, you're alternating your side with the Oppobot, but you'll take turns picking the actual state. And that's the basics of how to play this with two people instead of one. However, I'm gonna show you a sample turn of just a pure solo game. We're actually gonna play one full turn and then we're gonna play enough into turn two for you to see a strategy phase. And then we'll call this video to an end. All right, so now we're ready to go. And I'm gonna model a turn from the outset. So we're gonna do every single phase. I've got my start card and I'm gonna draw six cards. One, two, three, four, five, six. And that's my planning phase. And now I've got an opening hand to look at. So you can look at it with me and let's figure out what we've got. So we have our start card, which we're almost certainly going to play first because it lets us put campaigners out, get a couple of starter buttons and add cubes in New York, which sounds good to me. We've also got the 15th Amendment. This is playable. The Civil War is not in effect. So we roll a D6 and then on a roll of three to six, we add two supporting Congress and we add eight cubes anywhere, no more than two per state. So the 15th Amendment is pretty awesome and we definitely want to get it out. We'll have the National Women's Rights Convention, also playable if civil war is not in effect. So obviously the Oppobot is gonna spit civil war at us at some point and we'll be stuck. We can add one support in Congress and one cube of any color and one state of each region. So these are some fine events here for us to play with. With Lucy Stone, we'll get one button and we'll add a cube in one state of each region and it's a color of our choice. Sojourner Truth lets us add cubes to the Midwest Francis Harper lets us add cubes to the Atlantic and Appalachia region. Again, if the Civil War card is played, uh, we can't put any cubes out there, so we'll have to think about what to do. And we've also got Women to the Polls, which lets us add two cubes in each of New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and Delaware. And I'm definitely gonna be interested in Jersey because there's a Jersey State card out for us to try to claim, and I think that we might go for that. So that's our hand, and we're gonna go ahead and play our first turn, and then I'll show you how the Oppobot's gonna respond. We are going to go ahead and play our starting card. There is no reason not to just go ahead and play our start card, and that is the Seneca Falls Convention. It's going to let us place one yellow and one purple campaigner in the northeast region. We can receive two buttons. Fantastic. And we can add two cubes in New York. So I'm going to add one yellow, one purple. You definitely want to have some diversity amongst your cubes because there will be cards that remove all the purple cubes or all the yellow cubes. So if you've been going too hard in one color, it can really, really hurt strategically. So be careful. So that's our play. One thing I want to note while we're doing this is that campaigners go in regions and cubes go in states. So as you play, you're never going to put a campaigner in Rhode Island or anything like that. They're going to go to the Northeast and they're going to just put their cubes all over the place. So that was us. The Oppobot also has a start card that it will play. It's got the Patriarchy, where it is going to put a campaigner out in the south, and then we're gonna add cubes to a bunch of different regions on the map. Oops. So we're gonna put our campaigner in the south, and then we're gonna add one cube in each state in the northeast, in the Atlantic and Appalachia, the south, and the midwest. Ugh. So the only places that are safe from this are the west, and the planes. Everything else is getting one red cube. So let's get them out there. 
All right, so I've sped that process up for you. You're welcome. Uh, but the one place I have yet to put a cube is in New York, because I wanted to remind you, when you put a red cube in a place that has suffragist cubes, instead of placing a red cube, you take one of our cubes away. So we're gonna say that the purple cube disappears, leaving only the yellow one in New York. And so that is the patriarchy's move this round. And what a move it was. The Oppobot is gonna put up some stiff competition. Get ready. So I'm looking at my hand and what concerns me the most are two things. One, I'd really like to get New Jersey because I'm already here in the Northeast and there's a New Jersey uh, state card that I would like for myself. I don't want the Oppobot to get it and do stuff. The other concern I have is that I have several cards in this hand that need to be played when the Civil War is not in effect. And I know that the Civil War is somewhere in the early cards for the Oppobot. And that means that if I'm going to play them, I might need to play them now, or I'm gonna to have to be able to hold out until later. Once the Civil War comes out, it's in effect for the rest of the turn. And that means all of the remaining rounds of card play, not one round. So if it comes out, all of my Civil War cards are tanked, for their event. I can still spend them to pay for things like campaigning, but maybe I don't wanna do that. So if I wanna use any of those events, I better do it now. So I think I'm just gonna aggressively go for the 15th Amendment. And what the 15th Amendment is gonna allow me to do is roll a D6. On a roll of three to six, I get to add two support in Congress, and then I get to add eight cubes anywhere, no more than two per state. So this will help me in my journey towards getting New Jersey support, and also let me put some cubes in other places. This is worth it to me. So we're gonna play the 15th Amendment for its text. We're gonna get a D6. Oh my goodness, yes, I rolled a six, yes. So that means that I have two support in Congress now. Come on, Congress. I don't necessarily wanna get there too soon, right? But I would like to have a nice stockpile of goodwill from the guys in the Capitol. And I can also place eight cubes anywhere, no more than two per state. By the way, if that roll had not gone well, I wouldn't get to do any of this and that would have been bad. So I would have needed to spend one of my buttons to re-roll. I'm glad I didn't come to that. So I can eight, add eight cubes anywhere, no more than two per state. So let's say I added one to New Jersey and then two. So I'm on my New Jersey quest. And then I wanna add in places where there are state cards because I like to get them and not have the oppo bot get them. So let's do three, four, California, five, six, Utah, and then seven, eight, Kansas. And I was thinking maybe I can come out and campaign in these areas and try to snap up these state cards before the opposition gets too far with it. I do need to do something about the Midwest, but I have the Sojourner Truth card that I'm hoping to play this turn. So maybe that'll do it for me. So that was my play. Now we're going to go back over to the Oppobot and draw a card for them. Oh dear. So this card is called Border States. We're gonna add one red cube in each of Delaware, Maryland, West Virginia, Kentucky, and Missouri. So they are starting to gather power in these different places. So Delaware is gonna get another cube. Note this lovely little cube repository for it. Maryland, West Virginia, Kentucky, and Missouri. So we're gonna to have to be careful. They're starting to spread over here and I do not like it. But since they were able to play the event, they did not have to campaign. It's as simple as that. Now it's us again. So they haven't pulled Civil War yet. Let me think about how I wanna respond. All right, I'm seriously concerned about the Civil War thing. So I'm going to play National Women's Rights Convention. This one again is playable if the Civil War is not in effect. Add one support in Congress and one purple or gold cube to one state of each region. So I'm gonna get another support. Don't worry, the Oppobot will be along to take these away from me before long, so I'm just getting going on it. And then I can put one cube in one state of each region. So here's what I'm gonna do. Let's put a purple in California because I would like to get the card. Let's put a gold in Kansas because I would like to get that card. And like, this is a lot of work done for me with not a lot of travel, excellent. In the south, let's take the cube out of Georgia. So if I put a cube in here, it's basically the equivalent of just taking this away. So that's one. Here in the Midwest, ooh, I don't like that it's in Missouri, but I also would like to get Illinois or Ohio's card. So let's take the cube out of Illinois. In this region, Virginia is the one that's the most in danger of losing a card. So I'm gonna take the cube out of Virginia. 
And then up here in the north, I'm going to put a yellow cube in Jersey. So that way I'm making good progress towards getting state cards. And I like those because I want to show you how they work for this demo. And also I just like to have them. It's usually an opening strategy for me in this game to try to go snap them up. And then if I can kind of park over here and get cubes all over the place, that puts me in a good situation because I can pick up a lot of states that way if the Oppobot doesn't follow me there. Speaking of the Oppobot, <laughs> it is their turn again. So now we have South Dakota rejects suffrage. So this one we are going to play for the event because there is support in Congress for me. Uh, if there wasn't, we would use this card to campaign. So play if there's at least one cylinder in Congress, remove it, and then add two red cubes to South Dakota. Well then, so this is gonna get removed and we're gonna add two red cubes to South Dakota. So remember my plan to take over the plains? I'm being challenged. All right, so it's my go again. And this time I'm not super worried about the Civil War card because I can hold my last one over if I really want to. And if they play it this late in the turn, that's on them. So I think what I'd like to do actually is get New Jersey's state card. And I'm going to do it by playing Women to the Polls. This one is going to allow me to place two cubes in New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and Delaware. And then after this, I'm going to take a campaign action for my next one so you can see how they work. But for now, I'm going to place two more cubes in Jersey, which is going to give me that state card. I'll show it to you in a moment. In Pennsylvania, there is one red cube, and then we'll put in a yellow cube. And then in Delaware, there are two red cubes, which I will remove instead of placing two of my own. So doing a little damage to the red over here, which is up my alley. I'm good with that. Excellent. Also, I do get to take the New Jersey card. So let's look at our winnings. Woohoo! All right, so this one is going to let me receive two buttons whenever I play it. I'm not going to play it just yet, but I'm going to play it before the end of this demo so you can just see how a state card gets played. For now, New Jersey is going to hang out in my tableau to be used at a time of my choosing because I can wait. But so can the Aquabot, and it's been waiting to come back at me. So, gerrymandering. This one's going to make me remove two yellow cubes from the states with the most yellow cubes. I told you you have to diversify. No! All right, so what are my states with the most yellow cubes? Um, we've got Jersey. Good thing I got that state card. We've also got Kansas. Darn it, going to have to go back and restart my, my Lord's work over there. So... The bot got me, boo. But I can respond and I have two rounds left to do a bunch of stuff. I think what I wanna do is campaign because I wanna show you how campaigning works. So we are going to play Francis Harper, but we're not gonna play her for the action on the card. We're gonna play her to take a campaigning action. So I'm going to campaign. I'm gonna roll these two D4, uh, but first, I personally want to decide if I want to move somebody. So I think I would like to move a campaigner out to the west. So I'm going to spend one of my campaign buttons to do this. We're going to spend a button. I want to move my gold campaigner out here to the west. And then I'm going to roll these two dice. All right. So this actually worked out super well. I've got a three and a four. And here is what I will do. I'm going to give the four to our friend in the northeast. And I'm going to give the three to our gold campaigner out west. And gold is going to be able to place enough cubes to get two state cards. Amazing. So in Utah and in Cali, those three cubes are placed and we're going to get these two state cards. So let's grab them and then we'll look at them in a moment. Yes. And then up here we get to place four cubes. So I can make some decisions here. Do I want to put cubes out or do I want to take cubes away? Hmm. Or a combination. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put two cubes in Connecticut, which will remove one, add one. I'm going to put another two in Rhode Island, which will remove and add. So I'm making a bit of progress rather than trying to put all my eggs in one basket just yet. I'm wreaking havoc up in the Northeast on that Oppobot. All right, so let's have a look. California lets me do some drawing and discarding, which is actually great. Your more powerful cards are at the bottom of your deck in this game. So anything that cycles your deck a little bit is really, really nice. And then Utah is going to let me just spew out a bunch of cubes all over this region, and it's going to prevent the Oppobot from doing so. So I'm very happy about it. I can hold on to this until I know where the cubes need to go in this region of the country. So I'm going to hold on to this until much later in the game. The other thing that I can do is I can choose to play a state or a strategy card at this time. So I've played a card from my hand, 
And I could have done this before I played the card from my hand, or you can do it after. So we're gonna go with after. I'm gonna go ahead and play New Jersey because I'm running a little low on buttons. I got one button, I like some buttons. So we're gonna spend this, I'm just gonna discard it to get two buttons. And I feel like that was a pretty good round. I have one more before we're gonna be moving to the next turn. So it's the Oppobots go. Southern quote, hospitality. So now we're gonna place one red cube in each of Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, and Tennessee. So let's go ahead and do it. Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, and Tennessee. So the South is looking very, very red. And it is concerning for me as a poor suffragist trying to get my rights, but we're gonna have to play hard. And then I can play one more card this round and I wanna play Sojourner Truth. This can work out for better or for worse, but I'm gonna roll a D8 and I can basically place cubes in the Midwest in accordance with the number that I roll. So let's hope for a high one. And then it says no more than one cube per state. So I can't just dump everything in one state, but let's get our lovely D8 and we're just gonna roll it. A two. Okay, no, that's too much. That's terrible. So we're gonna spend one button to try to roll a little better than that. A four. All right, well, it wasn't great, but it was something. So here's what we're gonna do. We're going to put one cube of ours in Illinois, and then we're gonna take these out of those states for the remaining three. So that was my last card round for turn one. Sojourner Truth goes in discard, and the Oppobot gets one more pot shot at us. Southern Resentment. Play if the 15th Amendment is in effect. Uh-oh. So we're gonna add one cube in each of Texas, Louisiana, Arkansas, Mississippi, and Alabama. So since the 15th Amendment has a little infinity sign on it, it's in effect forever, and the Southern states are mad about it. Hmm. So uh, we're gonna add one cube in each of Texas, Louisiana, Arkansas, Mississippi, and Alabama. So Texas, Louisiana, Arkansas, Mississippi, and Alabama. And that was the Oppobots last go for this particular turn. Now we're in cleanup. So basically we advance the turn marker. Um, this stays here because it's in effect forever and ever. If there was something in this box, we would pick it up. So the Civil War will be like that when it comes out. We're not at the end, so we don't have to check for any congressional victories of any type. And so we're basically ready to start another turn. So for me, I've got this card carried over from the last turn. I'm gonna draw six more cards. One, two, three, four, five, six. And um, we would have this as our next hand for our next turn. And again, the Oppobot doesn't draw anything. We're not gonna have one more phase, which is a strategy phase. And that's something I definitely want you to see. And then we'll take this video to a conclusion. Now we're gonna have a strategy phase, and that's something that you don't do on turn one, partially because you are committing buttons and you need to make sure that you have buttons to commit before you have something like a strategy phase. So we're gonna be dealing with our two buttons and we have to decide if we're gonna commit them to get one of these strategy cards. So this one lets you remove a card that's in effect for the remainder of the turn if you don't like it, which is pretty nice. This one is regional focus, which lets you place cubes in a region of your choice, not bad. And then national focus, which lets you add cubes in one state of each region. So we will decide which one of these we want, but uh, what I do know is I don't want the Oppobot to get any of them. So even though it's a risk, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm, I'm going to commit both of my buttons because I would like to at least prevent the Oppobot from getting one of these. And the Oppobot's gonna roll a D4 and we're just gonna see how it plays out. All right, so the Oppobot got a one. We put up two buttons, so we still have to spend them but we beat the Oppobot, so we get to choose one of the cards. I'm gonna get Counter Strat, because this is gonna let me eventually remove a card that I don't like from play. So I'm gonna put it down here in my little tableau with my state cards and save it for an opportune moment. This is where I'm going to end our demo of Votes for Women. Hopefully you've got a good sense of game flow and you feel confident playing it yourself because it's a very fun game that's also gonna teach you a lot about history. Thank you so much for watching. Don't hesitate to ask questions and most of all, Happy gaming. I've been down to Madison to see the folks and sights. You'd laugh, I'm sure, to hear them talk. 
about the women's rights. Now it's just as plain as my old hat, as plain as plain can be, that if the women want the vote, they'll get no help from me. 